So there's many ways to build a Reaper or a God of Death in Elden Ring. We've explored the Faith variant. In this video, we're going to go over an even better version, which is the Intelligence variant. An even higher damage dealing one that uses some of the best yet most overlooked weapons in Elden Ring and it does so in style. You're going to be able to bring death upon your foes, lay waste on the battlefield and destroy anything before it even gets a chance to reach you. So let's begin. Now this build despite having high levels of intelligence doesn't actually make use of any spells though you can probably add them in the mix if you want to. I'm not even using a staff in this case but exclusively relying on melee weapons. To be more specific melee weapons with extremely strong weapon arts that take advantage of our high levels of intelligence and magic damage boost. In this case death poker is the main one the one that we're going to be using most of the time. You can set this up in a number of very interesting ways. With the light attack you can create a trail of ghost flame damage that travels really far away deals extremely high damage on that path and also creates a ton of frostbite build up to the point that all almost anything will die within seconds at the very most. Each tick deals about 1200 damage so that can quickly stack up in just a matter of seconds. The second ability on it is also the Ghost Flame Explosion with the R2 follow-up. This is amazing in close range and also throws enemies on their back if you want to like just humiliate them. Meanwhile in the left hand we're gonna be coupling this with the Sword of Melos for a few reasons. The biggest being the Shriek ability on it that debuffs enemies defenses by 15% so any following attacks will deal way higher damage but it comes with other advantages too one of them being the fact that you get more FP sustained so every time you defeat enemies while this is equipped you get a portion of FP back and last but not least it causes blood loss build up and it's also a great sword so this means you can power stance this with a death poker do jumping L1 attacks and provide both frost build up and and bleed build up at the same time. Now the third weapon that we're gonna add is going to be the death ritual spear. This comes with the spear call ritual. We've covered this a couple of days ago and how powerful that ability is. Basically it calls forth these spears from the sky that lay waste on the battlefield and completely annihilate anything. They also come in very fast so they are extremely hard to dodge and most important they seem to hit the same spot relatively easily compared to other similar skills that that get casted from the sky so this one barely misses and it's also amazing at stunning enemies especially bosses with large hitboxes now in terms of some of the other items let's also check those I'm using the snow witch hat because it gives us a 10% additional bonus to frost damage so that's definitely helpful with the build-up that we're creating from the death poker on top of this we're also making use of the Elden Lord armor I think it looks really nice it also has decent defenses I guess and we're kind of making up for the lack of those with the two pieces from the veteran armor set. Between these two right here we're getting about 45 points into poise, quite some nice defenses but you will need about 27 endurance with this whole setup if you don't want to start fat rolling or getting into high load. Now in terms of the talismans we want to boost the weapon art damage which is why we're making use of the Shard of Alexander to boost the attack power of that and also a magic scorpion charm. This raises magical attacks and if you were wondering what types of attacks the weapon arts are on the death poker and the death spear yes these are also counting as magical attacks we're also making use of the carrion filigree crest in there it lowers the fp consumption by our weapon skills so totally worth it for more sustain especially since we also get some fp back from the sword of melos finally it kind of depends on you i really like the sword seals in pve because i don't have to focus 5 10 minutes maybe even 15 more levels into certain stats I can just put this for just one slot and it definitely helps meanwhile I can concentrate some of the other stats on something different I'm also making use by the way of a magic shrouding cracked tier to boost magic attacks by another like I'm not sure 20% for like three minutes and a cerulean hidden tier for eliminating FP consumption for about 15 seconds it's definitely useful at the start of the combat so you will have even more damage and and FP consumption on top. Now in terms of the attributes, I've invested 40 points into Vigor, we want to get as close as possible to the first cap, maybe even more with higher levels, so as close as possible to 1500 HP. 27 points into Mind plus 5 coming from the Source Seal, that gives
gives us plenty enough room to pretty much spam our attacks, which is something that we're going to be doing quite often, but you can maybe sacrifice two of those points into endurance instead and reach at least 27. That's the bare minimum that you will need for this exact setup that I have right here if you don't want to start fast rolling, so maybe go into that, maybe even 30 with this same setup. In terms of other stats, intelligence is the only one left, 75 points in this case or 70 depending how many left you have. You will definitely want to invest as many of those as possible since this is going to buff the damage of your magic attacks including the ones coming from the weapons. Even if their scaling with intelligence might be just a D for example, this will still give them a huge boost to damage compared to strength or dexterity that they also require. Now in terms of combat strategy, I really enjoy starting with the Sword of Milos to kind of debuff enemies and deal more damage with my following attacks. After that, I lay down a Ghost Flame with a Death Poker, especially against regular enemies. Usually I just leave them come to me and they won't even make it to the half of the trail before they completely implode. And of course, you also have the huge Frostbite buildup that takes only a couple of hits before it even triggers. Every single tick from the Ghost Flame deals over 1000 damage and that quickly adds up to thousands and thousands and then there's also like the build up that happens very fast and that's just with one trail. Obviously you can create a lot more trails, even spam this if you can get a boss in a corner or in a tight space and usually this means just melting them within seconds. If you are close to them or if you have the opening you can also use the R2 follow up which is the Ghost Flame Explosion. This one deals even higher burst of damage, does not leave a trail of ghost flame and it also throws enemies on their backs, especially against ones like Melania for example. Now on the other hand if you don't have any FP left or yeah don't want to cast anything or simply don't have the time window for it, you can always use jumping L1s with the death poker and the sword of Melos. These are power stands because they are both great swords and you also provide additional bleed or blow loss in this case. Definitely helpful and yes it can totally stun enemies. Even though you're not investing points into strength or dexterity they are still very useful at dealing damage in melee range. Now against some of the bigger tougher bosses like the ones with big hitboxes or anything where you have enough room to cast the death right you can definitely go ahead and use the death spear instead. This is something that I'm also using following the Sword of Melos debuff. Usually this is going to deal extremely high levels of damage even higher in this case than a death poker and you can pretty much yeah just stun them within just three casts four if they're a little bit more resistant but totally worth it. After this point you can have a few options, you can continue spamming death poker at their head which is going to almost double in damage or you can set up another trail of ghost flame like how I'm doing in this case and lay even more damage against them. If they don't jump, move away or if they are slow kind of bosses, it's totally worth it to explore that idea and kind of combine these two weapons. To be honest, I'm not really sure if there's any downside to this build outside of the fact that maybe some of these animations are a little bit long to cast so you kind of have to be careful with your positioning or the enemy's attacks but even if you don't do that like how I did it in this case even if you don't get the setup the damage is so high on some of these abilities that bosses will literally drop before you even set anything up that's how amazing at least the death poker is in this case and no if you were wondering I don't think you can couple this with a faith build first of all because these weapons have no faith scaling at all on them and more important their abilities also don't get any benefits from that attribute. These are pure intelligence based weapons if you're talking about just using the weapon arts so that's why we're making use of this on a high intelligence build. Anyway totally let me know down below what is your opinion of this build, do you like it, are you planning to use it or do you prefer sticking to the reaper of death. As always if you enjoyed this video at any point a thumbs up on it would be super appreciated and if you really enjoyed it also don't forget to subscribe and also activate that notification bell and I'll see you guys in the next one.